But without the marrying house, I, I would be a lost cause. I would have froze to death and I would have starved. And thanks to them, I did. They saved my life. Marion House is a lifesaver. The Marion House came from a compassionate response that we need to take care of the poor in our community. Uh, what was available was an old, rickety Victorian house that was falling apart. And this is where it began for us. People had to line up on the outside to get in. The line would just seem to go on forever because it was so small. And when they got in, there wasn't a whole lot. But what they experienced was love, compassion, and very much a home uh, for the poor. The Marion House, uh, when, it was a, when it was a house, was vastly undersized for, for the amount of need that we were seeing in the community. The new Marion House was built uh, with a vision in mind to uh, really accommodate greater numbers. But the vision about how we're helping those folks and, and what the soup kitchen is meant to be. I was so proud of, of the ministry and now of this, this wonderful new building that housed that ministry. We run the soup kitchen on a very small budget, but we serve over 200,000 meals a year. Over 400 volunteers a week come to the Marion House complex to help our poor. Uh, we have volunteers from uh, all different walks of life. I hand out the dishes and uh, plates as the people come in. And I like to kid with them. And when you treat them with dignity, they respond. The Marion House Soup Kitchen, I believe, is a trust building venue. A lot of our folks first have their introduction to us through the soup kitchen. We want to get to know them there and then eventually try to bring them into our other programs. The last night I drank, uh, I woke up the next morning and I had passed out and rolled into my fire and I, I camped alone and uh, I had melted my boot to my foot. I didn't wake up and when I finally was able to get up and you know hobble into town, I, uh, I came to the Marion House because they saved my life. The soup kitchen is intentionally designed so that the exit going out of the soup kitchen is, is right into the uh, Hannaford Center for Self-Sufficiency. The vision for, for Catholic Charities in the Marion House is, is for us to be able to meet the needs in one spot. Uh, the vision about self-sufficiency was something that we were taking very seriously. So what you're going to notice is medical facilities, a nurse. I understand you want to get your blood pressure checked today? You're going to see social service agencies and groups that are now available to an individual in a way that previously had never been thought of. And my husband get an accident and he have to stop working. It was very, very, very hard. In our life support program, it is one of the most uh, touching programs that we have. A lot of families with children. Marion House is able to reach out to families who need help in areas of clothing, formula, and other infant necessities. And I, like, how can I do that? And like, you just go ahead and take whatever you need. It's, they tell me how many pieces of clothes and diapers and baby food can I take. And, when I, when I get in there, I feel like I... Like I can do something for my family. We have Christmas and, and birthday gifts in that program as well. It's hard to explain until you actually get to experience it. I was absolutely blown away the extent of this facility's uh, services to the community. They are incredible stewards of what we have given them. So we've been able to see the direct results of our funds and our money. We also have a community outreach program which takes the services of the Marion House out to the 10 county coverage area that the Catholic Charities serves. The number of children, the number of families, and the homeless population now, I'd say more than triple. James is, is one of the most giving, humble people that I've ever met, and the community outreach program really started out of his garage. So yeah, we go all over this town. We will go from east to, east to west, north to south, east to north. It just depends on 
phone calls sometimes. We cover 10 counties at Catholic Charities, so he will often be in Leadville and the furthest reaches of our coverage area. Delivering furniture, toys, food, baskets. Um, and, and when he goes to those communities, it's like Christmas. No matter what time of year he happens to arrive. We have a wonderful storage area below the soup kitchen footprint. Um, we have all sorts of food. We get generous donations from, throughout the community. This is the sorting room where all food that comes in is sorted, shelved. Uh, on the average of 171 tons goes into the meals that are prepared here. In that space down there as well, we have uh, the sorting area for all of our clothing items that come to us. And we just pick out the ones that are the season, like this is winter, and so we pick out the warm clothes. And we also pick out some of the um, dress clothes in case somebody needs some dress clothes for interviews and things like that. That's the power of the Hannafin Center. It's where they can take an hour and in that hour uh, literally perform miracles in a way that they were spending 10 hours just transporting themselves to where they needed to be. Now, because they have all of this available to them in one place, they can go there and within an hour get many things uh, that they need. It's for anyone who has a need. To, to help the people who come there get back on their feet and become more self-sufficient. You know, now I'm in recovery and to me, it's not just about recovery, it's about wellness. The need is the ever-increasing numbers of poor. Uh, not just the homeless either, the, what we call the working poor. Some of them, and especially in more recent days, uh, are the working middle class. There are some tough moments when you see a family come to us for the first time, exhausting every other resource that they have and realizing that they, they need to now come for help. When you have something that's very needful right in front of your eyes, and very important that we can put away a lot of our differences and we can really work together. Since the beginning of the Marion House, funding fell short, partly because of the decline in the economy. We're struggling now. Our goal is to raise $2.4 million, wipe out this debt, and, and take our self-sufficiency programs to the next level. If you don't have debt, you have more ministry. It's, it's extremely efficient. Uh, they take, uh, you know, they, they stretch it as far as they can. It's an amazing group of caring people that seem to have an overwhelming capacity for compassion and, and the desire to help. And really without it, <laughs> the Marion House is a place where lives are transformed. The only thing we care about is do you have a need and can we lovingly meet it? It calls us to give forth from the very best of what we have to make a difference to some of the most vulnerable people we have here in Colorado Springs. This is our community, our house, our opportunity and responsibility to serve the needs of the poor in our community. I guess one would have to think, uh, what would this community do without the Marion House? Uh, this would fall back uh, possibly on uh, governmental officials. Healthier communities are better for business. The Marion House serves all people, any people that are in need, no matter what their faith is. So we have to respond to a new kind of poverty that includes our neighbors, the people we work with, and together we can solve that problem in our house. This is one of my proudest moments at Catholic Charities. By these wonderful donations, you are helping individuals and families make it through a very tough time of year. And you are thinking of the people who are in need in our community. Thank you for your generosity. We really want, in an ideal world, to put out of business. It's our house. It's our house. Our house. It's our house. It's our house. It's our house. It's everyone's house.
I'm so thankful.